doesn't it do that? Hey there, how are you? <laughs> Sleepyhead sunshine. So yeah, sorry about last night. <sighs> so how are you, uh, Cole of the Great, and or Fairy, and Clay Miko, and everybody? Alrighty, let me just get that going. Nice. Oh, I gotta go into the other th thing. Alrighty, so that's good there. Sorry about last night. As you, some of you know, and some of you, I, those of you who don't know, I went to a fiber festival yesterday and was walking around, and I guess I'm not used to the exercise. Not that I was walking that much, but I was still walking. I got tired, and I, when I got home, got something to eat, and was chilling, and made the mistake of laying down. I set an alarm, but I slept right through my streaming. So, to make it up to everybody tonight, that's why I'm on now at 7. So, we will do last night's stitch tonight. And then we will do the, um, work on the temperature blanket, as usual, for, for our Sunday evening. All right. Going to wait for... This is your demonic summoning circle time. Well, deal with your demons. <laughs> you probably got one sitting right next to you. Oh, did I say that out loud? Out loud. And I'm not talking about your daughter. <laughs> okay. I'm going to wait for a couple more minutes till a little more people come in. Before we get into tonight's stitch, this is the circle. <laughs> we don't mention the magic circle because there are people here who can't really get the hang of it. But we, I'll work on Oh no, C Gam's here now. Oh. Yeah, talk about demonic summoning circle. Yep. The biggest demon of them all. <laughs> I see him. <laughs> There's like a little bit of a delay built in to Twitch with the chat commands. So you can't immediately do another one right away. But anyway. <sighs> so. Yeah, that's the way it works. That's Twitch. It's not me. We're going to be doing the Caterpillar Stripe Stitch tonight. Before I get into this, before I get into the stitch tonight, some um, announcements that are coming up, if I can remember. Those of you who are in the Discord, and those of you who aren't, I do have a Discord. The link just popped up in the chat. I made a poll yesterday. A new uh, channel with a poll. So if you get a chance, go to the polls channel and read the question and answer it with the appropriate thumbs up or thumbs down emoji. And then the other announcement was... I've got all of May planned out. We're going back to basics for May. 
So your basic stitches, for those of you who don't, don't know much about crochet or anybody needs a little bit of a refresher. And let's see, let me gotta find my calendar. Hey there, Sophie, how are you? Let me look at my planning calendar. So, like I said, the month of May, we're going back to basics. Sundays in May are still going to be temperature blanket. The exception is the 7th of May, I'm doing the marathon stream. Since I reached 100 followers, I'm now at 119. All... Since I'm at 119 followers, I'm doing the marathon stream on Sunday the 7th, starting at 10 a.m. Eastern, going until whenever. And I've got the blanket plan, or the, the pattern in the yarn planned for the blanket that I'm going to be donating to Project Linus. Also in preparation for that, and I've learned my lesson since yesterday, the... Saturday the 6th, I'm going to a sheep and wool festival, and I've decided after that's over with, once I come back home, I'm chilling, relaxing, getting plenty of sleep. There will be no stream on Saturday the 6th because I don't want to end up sleeping through it because I'll be tired, and also the following day is the marathon. Um, let's see here. But you're going to get the normal schedule. Everything else through May is the normal schedule, 8 p.m., the same days, except for Sunday the 7th. And I'm already starting to plan a thing for June. We're not there yet. Um, was that the only thing? Oh, another thing, I came up with an idea for people I know here locally, that I know personally, that also crochet, and I want to explain the, the idea and the project to everyone else, that if they want to do, do it in their own area, their own friends, or whatever, if you have a group of crocheters that you know that live close by, this is a really good idea I had. So we're, what I've decided is our group is all gonna make granny squares, approximately five inches square, out of worsted weight or size four yarn in acrylic. It could be whatever pattern, granny square, or whatever. So it's, but they all have to be at least, have to be approximately five inches square. So all summer, we're going to be making these with our scrap yarn, free time, or whatever. And when we all get, each of us get enough built up, then I'm assuming maybe sometime in the fall-ish, depending on how many squares we all get stitched up, we all get together, combine all of our squares together, mix them all up, dump them on the table or whatever, and then sit around and just grab squares at random and join them together. And then, depending on how many we have, either if there's a whole lot of them, which I don't, not anticipating all, that many, but if there's enough, possibly each one of us make, with those combination of squares, make a blanket, or we all piece them together and then we each get like a quadrant and then piece those quadrants together to make one big blanket and then donate it. So it's a good idea, a really creative idea I had. So if anybody else in your local area have, um, <laughs> have friends that crochet or even if you want to do it on your own, if you just want to make up, you got a lot of scraps, not enough to make one whole project, make up a bunch of different squares, whatever, 
in different patterns or whatever, and then piece them together and then do donate them that way. So I just wanted to uh, relay that idea to everyone else. All right, so we're gonna get started with the Caterpillar Stripe Stitch. This looks complicated, but this is super, super, super easy. It's like very easy. So with this, it looks best if you do at least three colors, like I have here. Um, I guess you could do more, but it's gonna look best with three. So the repeat for this is four plus four for the foundation. And I gotta pull up my instructions, even though I know how to do this. If this will be a, we could also do a community one in here and everyone could do a select number and then send them in to you and I can connect them and show the finished product on stream. That's a good idea. That's That would actually be a good idea that if anybody would, would be interested in that, I don't know how much shipping would be, because there's that. Um, if that's something that, uh, that people would want to do, make up your own and then send them to me, and then we, then I, and then everyone else, whoever here locally, can stitch them together, and then we can donate it. Either way, because I know there, there are people all over the world. I mean, I know we've got, I know there's somebody in Spain, and I think there we had at one time a follower. They were in Australia. So I don't think that's going to work for, the, for those people. It's a lot of money to ship squares is international shipping. But suggestion. It's a pretty good, really good suggestion. All right, let me uh, wipe my eyes. So this is a, how many? This is a six row repeat for this pattern. Every two rows, we're gonna change colors. So like I said, this is a this stitch is a multiple of four plus an additional four for your foundation chain. I am going to do let's I'm gonna do 16. If anybody's crocheting along with me, let me know. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Actually, I'm going to do 20. 18, 19, 20. I think that's when I did like 28 or whatever. So I got my foundation chain. It's a multiple of four plus an additional four for my turn for my foundation chain. And in the fourth chain from the hook, one, two, three, four, you're going to do a double crochet. And then in every remaining chain, each and every one will get one double crochet. You're just doing a row of double crochets. That is the first row. I messed up that stitch. Let me zoom in a little bit more. But I'll post more about the um, 
granny square stitch along scrap blanket idea I had in the Discord. Probably do that sometime later tonight or tomorrow. For those that are not currently watching here on stream. Okay. You bought a cake winder and an umbrella thingy to make your own cakes. Came with a bunch of bonus things too. You mean a cake winder and a yarn swift? An umbrella thingy. An umbrella swift is actually what it's called. Yours is probably a lot better than mine. I mean, you've seen mine. Mine is, mine came with my electric spinning wheels and it's 3D printed. I mean, it works and all. It would work better. I mean, I have, I, I can even probably find a clamp. It needs to be clamped to a table. I mean, it, it does its job. So I've done a row of double crochets. Again, it's a multiple of four. That additional four is your turning chain so we have our double crochets now row two same color we're going to chain one and turn and you're going to do a double crochet into every stitch came with a bunch of needles and stitch markers all kind of things you didn't expect nice it's always good when you get extra freebies so row two, like I said, we're gonna do a single crochet into each stitch that we have here. So this, the first two rows is basic crochet. It's a row of double, then a row of single. And when you get to the end, you've got a turning chain here. You're gonna go into the top of that turning chain and you're gonna go in and pull up a loop and you're gonna leave your two loops on your hook. Cake as in chocolate with buttercream icing. I don't think you want buttercream icing in your yarn. That'll ruin the yarn and the icing. Okay. So we're going into the top of our, our last stitch, which is our turning chain, brought, brought up a loop, and we're gonna leave the two loops on the hook, because now we're gonna change colors. So now we're gonna just clip, leave a, a tail long enough to weave in, the usual, and you're gonna join however the best way that, that you join. This is the way I join, join most of them. Leave the two loops on the hook, get our second color, loop it over and pull it through those two loops. And then take our tails, our tail of our, sec, of our color B and the tail of our color A, pull them snug and then pull that close. So now we're on to row three. So row three is we're gonna chain three and turn the work. That row, th that chain of three is gonna count as our first double crochet and we're gonna skip this first stitch that's right here. So you're gonna skip that stitch. In the very next stitch, you do a double crochet. So with our second color, we've got two double crochets. And I like to look at it this way, that that is coming out of that stitch, but our turn turning chain is coming out of our first double crochet here. So we got our two double crochets. Now we're gonna chain two, 
So we've chained two, and now we're gonna skip two stitches. And in the third stitch, do a double crochet. And in the very next stitch, do a double crochet. So all we've done is we've done two here, one in each stitch, chain two, skip two, and each of the next stitches each get a double. That's your pattern. So we're gonna chain two, skip two stitches, and the next two stitches, they're each gonna get one double. We're gonna chain two, skip two stitches, and the next two are each going to get a double. You do this to the very end. Chain two, skip two, and I happen to be at the very end now. And the last two stitches each get one double. So the first two each get a double, chain two, skip two, the next two each get a double and so on. You will end with two doubles or a double in each of the last two stitches. So that's row three. Pretty simple. Row four is you're gonna chain one and turn and you're basically going, basically going to repeat that row here, but instead of doubles, you're gonna do single crochets. So each of the first two stitches, these two doubles, each of them is gonna get a single crochet. We're gonna chain two, go to the next two stitches. They're each gonna get a single. Chain two. Skip that chain, go to the next, to go to our double crochets each of those are each going to get one single. Chain two. And again, when we get to our, go to our doubles, each double gets one single. Chain two. And our doubles are each gonna get a single. When you get to your last double, which is, was, a, was your actually your chaining your turning chain when you started, but that it counts as a double. You're gonna go in, bring up a loop, and you're gonna stop because that's the end of row two. So again, row one, each double crochet from the row below are gonna get a single, chain two, and then you're gonna go to each double crochet and each one are gonna get one single. And you're gonna follow your repeat. You get to the end here, pull up the loop, leave two on the hook. We're gonna cut our tail, and now we're gonna switch to our third color. And our third color is where it gets a little more interesting. So we're gonna join with our third color. Hey there, lady1241, how are you? Okay, we're gonna join our third, our third color. We're gonna chain one and turn. The first two stitches, each of those two stitches, they're each gonna get one double crochet. Pretty simple. Now, what we're gonna do is after the, we do two double crochets, one in each stitch, we're going to do a triple. So we're gonna wrap twice. What do you mean double or single? Are you crocheting along with me? Hope I wasn't going too fast. Oh, I said double, okay. It's been rotten potatoes kind of day, but it's gonna be okay. I'm sorry. I hope it gets better for you.
What I meant here is in each of these first two stitches with your third color, each one will get a single. I meant single, if I said double, I meant single. So with our third color in the first two stitches, each one are gonna get one single. Now we're going to wrap our hook to do a triple, so we're gonna wrap it twice. And we're going to skip down three rows. So our first row is here. Our second row is here. Our third row is our last row of, of our first color. Yeah, I saw that you uh, frogged all of that sweater project that you were working on. Ugh. Not fun. Haven't done much since frogging, but I feel better now that I know what I did wrong. Hey. Glad that you were able to uh, find your mistake. So we've wrapped twice to do a triple, and we're going to skip down three rows, which is our, for, in my case, my last row of pink, and you're going to go into that first stitch. So there's a hole here. You're going to go into that very first stitch, bring up a loop from behind, and then bring it up somewhat tall, and it's okay if your, your rows here get a little smashed. And then you're going to yarn over through two, yarn over through two, and yarn over through two, like a triple. You're going to do that again for the next stitch. So you're going to do a wrap twice for a triple, go into the stitch three rows below, which in my case is the pink, Bring up the loop and then pull it up a little tall because you've got that distance to go. And then just finish your triple crochet like normal. And now we're going to skip those chains. Those chain spaces we did are behind these extended triples. And each of the next two stitches, which they're single crochets, they're each going to get a single. And then finish the pattern the same way. We're gonna wrap like a, we're gonna do a triple. So we're gonna wrap twice, go in to the first stitch that three rows below. So below the big space, go into that stitch, bring up a loop, pull it up somewhat tall and finish your triple. And do it the same thing for the very next stitch. Mine's a little wonky, so I'm going to do that last one a little bit better, or try to. This takes a little practice sometimes getting the right length for you, these extended stitches. That's a little bit better. Each of the next two single crochets, again, we're skipping all of those chain spaces. They're going to be hidden behind your triples here. So each of the next two stitches that are... They're both singles. They're each going to get a single. And then we're going to do the next grouping. And again, if your chains here, there's two rows of chains. If they get a little smashed, it's all right. And then the next two stitches are each going to get one. And we've got our space here, so we're going to go into our last row of our first color. Bring up the loop, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Do it one more time. And then the last two stitches are each going to get a single. So that's row five. Okay. Now row six, we're going to chain one and turn. And then every stitch, either the singles or the triples, every stitch is going to get a single crochet.
real basic stuff here. Yep, it kind of looks like a caterpillar. And then the very last stitch, leave two loops on the hook, change color, and if you're doing three colors, change back to your first color, and then the next row is the same as your first row. So you, my, if I do my next row here, it's all, hey there, Gold Misfit, how are you? When I add the sec, the, my color, the very first color I used, then it's all gonna be doubles. Just regular straight doubles, then a row of straight singles. And then your second color is when you do the two doubles, chain two, skip two, and do that, that pattern and complete it on and on. Real easy, it looks more complicated than it is. It's real simple. So it kinda of looks like the blue here is that's the body of the caterpillar and then these are all the legs. So be really good for a blanket. You can definitely see this as a, a really simple blanket that'll work up somewhat fast. Because it's all basic, you're not doing any complicated maneuvers. Sick of frogging? Yeah. I know how that is. I want to make an announcement. I have finished my last shawl in that yarn. I saw Clay Miko yesterday and gave her her shawl and her daughter's shawl. And I think possibly, I'm not certain yet, I might have enough here to make another shawl for her daughter. <laughs> I might have enough here to make one for her daughter in this colorway. Possibly. You ever just work on a project so long that you're just sick of working on it and you want it done? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, today I finished the very last shawl, the one for my aunt. It's done. I promise. I promise, 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 promise. that my next shawl that I make will not be that same pattern. And hey there, Crojo. Yeah, I promise I will not do that pattern for a long, long time. I'll still do it again eventually. Not anytime soon. <laughs> so, got that out of the way. Let's move all of my other... You've been... feel like you've been working on this stupid torto for weeks. I feel like I'm just frogging it. Well, sometimes it's that whole trial and error thing that you just gotta keep messing with it, unfortunately, until you get it right. Okay. Let me move my stitch markers out of the way. Move... Oh, I gotta zoom out of this. I finished la the previous week's uh, rows, because I think the last time I did temperature blanket, I didn't finish it all because I was behind because I missed the stream or whatever. Okay, Klee Mika. So this is all up until 
the 5th, 15th of April. So got got a bunch of oranges in there and some yellows. So we're getting, definitely getting a change of color from the winter. Definitely tell it's getting, it's spring. Um, before I get into this, let me just double check this. I need to do another row of yellow. Um, Crojo, if you've got the meme ready for tonight, I'm ready. If not, I can hold off. Me. Get a little bit of iced tea. And I will get this somewhat prepped. Again, like I had mentioned earlier, I know a bunch of people came in. If you're, if you're a member on the Discord, um, I recently put out a poll question asking a question about something pertaining to the Discord. Basically, if we anybody would like a YouTube watching party of certain videos on YouTube that... Crochet yarn adjacent crafts that I am not skilled in, but that are interesting that pertain, especially like weaving and spinning. We can do a, a um, YouTube watch party on the Discord channel on a non stream evening or day or whenever it works, or that'll be good for a lot of people. Um, I can't do it here on Twitch because I'm not. A lot, I'm not able to stream other people's content here on Twitch, but we can do a, a viewing party on there. Anybody who's concerned with the view, viewing party, you do not have to have your camera or microphone on. Because I know some people are not comfortable with it. In the video slash voice chat channels on Discord, there is a chat. So as we're having having like a view a, a watch along or a viewing, there you can enable the chat, you can pop it open, and we can all chat along that way. So we're not talking over the video. And then afterwards, if anybody wants to get on voice, we can discuss and if anybody has any questions, or they can uh, you can ask questions in the chat that's on there. And the other thing I had mentioned was there will be no stream on the Saturday the 6th because I'm going to the Sheep and Wool Festival and I am not going to do the same mistake like I did last night because I know I'm going to be tired. So I will get enough rest and sleep that evening because the following day is the marathon. The marathon stream, not running a marathon. <laughs> this... This does not run a marathon. And anybody who's new, welcome. I stream usually four nights a week. Mostly crochet. Actually, for the past four or five months, it's only been crochet. Um, I have done some other things, like at Christmas time, I did make some Christmas ornaments. Also, I have the YouTube channel. All of my streams are uploaded directly to the to the channel. Once the stream is over, so you can always go back and watch previous streams. 
And like I mentioned, we, ha we have a Discord community for people to share their projects, either what they're working on or what they finished or need to ask questions and I even have a place for suggestions. And my nose is itchy. It's fiber. Also, I've like I said earlier, I've already uh, have gotten May planned out. The schedule is posted here on Twitch, so you can kind of see what Scott I have in store for all of May. We're going back to basics. For those who are new to crochet or anybody who needs a refresher, there are some stitches that are gonna be done in May that are considered basic-ish stitches that some experienced crocheters might not even know themselves. I am doing the linen stitch. It's also known as the moss stitch, or here in the Twitch stream, our little group refers to this as the zipper stitch. And I'm going to show you why we refer to it as the zipper stitch. So let me zoom in. That's a good place right here. So every row basically we do a, I do a single crochet, then a chain, a single crochet. And when I do the single crochet, I'm going into the chain space of the previous row. And so this is one row, that's another, that's that's another. So they look. it looks like the teeth of a zipper. It's real, it's a very simple stitch to do. It's nothing elaborate. And the idea I got from this was a YouTuber. Um, the, her name is Krista. The channel's name is The Secret Yarnery. She's doing a temperature blanket also for this year. The only difference is she's leaving all of her tails long and she's going to make them into tassels on either end. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm going to weave in my ends and then at the end of the year I'll decide if I'm going to do a border or not. And I just realized that my blanket's probably not going to be square. <laughs> oh well. Um, And those who are new and don't know what a temperature blanket is, temperature blanket, you can see the chart that's above my head here. Um, the high temperature of the day of where I am located will determine the color that I will use. And each row on this blanket is one day. So this is my range. You can have different ranges, you can have more colors. I'm going basic. Thanks for the follow. Thank you for the follow, baby moon bath. Um, I'm doing a pretty basic one to use up some scraps and I didn't want it to be too uh, constructive of certain shades. And I'm doing this for the entire year. Tell us about the Fiber Festival. The Fiber Festival was, was nice. Um, it was mostly vendors. No problem checking out what everybody's making tonight. Nice. Are you making anything, Baby Moon Bath? Do you uh, make anything? It doesn't have to be crochet or knitting or 
yarn related. So with the uh, fiber festival I went to, it was primarily vendors selling um, yarn and sunba sunbathing suit for my sister. Nice. We have a, a Discord if you want to, uh, if you choose to join, and a lot of us share all, share our our whips and our foes. So like I was saying, sorry, I'm trying to answer everyone's question and tell you about the Fiber Festival. They were, I don't know, they were, I think there was like 70 some vendors or whatever. They were selling their yarn and they were selling a lot of, um, there was a couple vendors that were selling, um, nope, nope, you're not, you're not distracting me at all. They were also selling fiber to be spun. Uh, there was a small little group doing, hey there, dandy, he, him, 88. A small group that was a, it was, they were demonstrating Bronze Age Viking weaving and spinning. There was one guy that was, had chain mail and I think another body, another one that was carving like um, shuttle, like um, weaving shuttles and um, basic primitive needles, or I guess you would call them bodkins actually. Knowing how it was on a Sunday and you really wanted to go. Yeah, um, I think if I'm not mistaken, and this was in Frederick, Maryland. They also have another one in the fall, and I don't know if it's on just on a Saturday, the one in the fall. I'm not certain. Um, Lady1241, I know you're in the Baltimore metro area. Do you know about the um, Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival that's coming up in about two weeks? Uh, then the next Frederick Fiber Festival is Saturday the 28th of October. Okay. Gotcha. I've never been to the Sheep and Wool Festival. I've known about it for many years. I've never been. This, I think, is their 50th year, their 50th anniversary. I'm excited to go because the one I went to yesterday, it was just vendors apart from that one small little group of demonstrators. Last time I went, it was legit uh, the tiniest child. I only attend. Um, I don't... Um, spin my own yarn. I don't dye my own yarn. I don't prepare um, fiber or fleeces or anything like that. And must have been prophetical or my mom inspired a monster when I was three. <laughs> um, everything at that fiber festival and also at the Sheep and Wool Festival that's coming up. And Sheep and Wool Festivals, wherever you are, are going to be like this. It's going to be natural fibers. Sheep, alpaca, um, angora rabbit, linen, um, probably some cotton. What I am working on, and most of the stuff that I have is acrylic. I do love a lot of natural fibers. I just don't have a lot of it. And surprisingly, they only had one food truck at the one we went to yesterday. I think somebody had said that some of the other vendors, they were late or something. 
It's May 6th and 7th. Yep, May 6th and 7th. And I'm assuming tickets are still available. I haven't checked their website. It's only like $10 a person. And they said they had to raise their prices this year. I'm like, from what? <laughs> But the, the the sheep and wool festival is going to have more demonstrations. They're gonna I know they're gonna have like a herding demonstrations with the the dog herding the flock. Um, they're gonna have shearing demonstrations, spinning, weaving, um, knitting, crocheting. Um, there's probably a bunch of other different ones they're gonna have. I know there are, at the Sheep and Wool Festival, they're going to have seminars and classes you can attend. You, those, you have to pay for extra. It's like an extra fee, and that's probably already booked up. I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm just doing the general admission. And hopefully they're going to have a lot more food vendors, because yesterday I was hoping to get funnel cake, and they did not have funnel cake. So I was a little disappointed about that. But it was cool. It was good. Um, the weather wasn't too bad. It was really windy. Storms are coming through. Luckily, it held off until I got back home. Alrighty then, Clay Miko. <laughs> okay. I didn't end up purchasing anything, but um, I went with Clay Miko and Nora Ferry and Crojo. And I think they purchased some things. Let me join my next color. Come on. Come on. Basket of wine. Oh yeah, you're gonna you're gonna cake that uh that yarn you got. She got this really pretty purple and green merino wool. Okay. We need to flip all of this over. Yeah, there was a um, local winery there. And I think there was also um, a whiskey distiller. I hope she's not using her feet as a swift. You can use the back of a, um, like a chair, like a kitchen chair, if you've got the type that usually has like a the wooden or metal uprights, that usually works. It's a little more difficult in the pain. The whiskey was literally Linganar wine was here, literally right in the center aisle, right across was the whiskey. I don't remember the name of the uh, company. Wonder if Granny Karen Cakes Moreno will be attending the Sheep and Wool Festival or possibly demonstrating her talents. Maybe a... If I run into that old hag, I'm going to give her a piece of my mind. Those of you who don't know, the other week, was it last week? 
the other week, when I did Granny Week, I was planning on doing a bunch of stuff. I ended up getting my, doing some, but the first couple days, some old lady hijacked my channel, but I finally got it back. It's like, nerve of some people. I'm working on a day that it was in the 60s. After this, then I got a bunch of yellow. A whole bunch of yellow last week. I changed from using AccuWeather as my resource for temperatures because it was not accurate so i've switched to the weather channel which is a little bit more accurate watch the evening news to see if a riot breaks at a local festival hmm, yeah she that old lady better watch out weather bug yeah um so far the Weather Channel's been closer to accurate because when it was just really getting warm, there was a couple days it was in the upper 80s, and it was definitely the 80s. My phone during the day said it was like 84, 85 or whatever, and then that evening I went to check AccuWeather and it said it was like in the 70s. I was like, no, that's not right. And it was the, the, my town, my location, like, so I switched. This green yarn is slightly thinner and I always keep slipping, I did it again, the yarn right off that hook. I'm constantly <laughs> missing that chain. There we go. I think I'm getting it. Now the frog back to January 1st. Cause, no, I'm not frogging any of this. My little sister is 17, so she would get into the festival for free. Oh, really? I know children get in for free, but I didn't know it was under 18 was free. Hmm. Well, normally wouldn't say this because it's the internet, but anyone under 18 minutes for free, gotcha. Um, I will be there on Saturday the 6th, and I think you said that uh, um, you said something that maybe that you're not free on Saturdays, but I was just said if you're if you're there on that Saturday and you happen to see me there, yeah, just stop on and say hi. If you don't think I'm not going to take the neurodivergent child with me, <laughs> gotcha.
you go on Sunday. I may see if I can take my sister's friend just for fun. Oh, yeah, cool. Make a day of it. I think there is also going to be a, like a, it might, I don't know, it might be the same people that were at the festival that I went to yesterday. They are going to have like a Bronze Age Viking type encampment at part of it. It could be the same people. So what is everybody working on tonight? I know a bunch of you all were frogging stuff. Working on whip number five. About to say, F it and just finish your pattern. <laughs> Aw. Sorry that it's uh, not uh, a fun experience for you. Okay, I'm getting near the end of this. I might have enough to finish this row of this color. Good. Use up that green. That was my whole purpose, especially this green, because I got tons of this light green. Hey, Citric for Blue. Got to 53 inches on an unidentified project on the loom. It's 26 wide and cotton. Don't know what it is. Just a simple 12 pattern. Don't know when to stop. Oh, nice. What type of loom is that? Grammy says a new blanket pattern is Granny Spiked My Ripple. She, Grammy showed me that pattern. And um, it's a pretty cool looking pattern. I will. Um, I've never done it. I will post the link to it. Oh, a four shaft loom. Oh, cool. All I have is a 15 inch um, tabletop rigid heddle loom. So, nothing compared to the loom you have. <laughs> I don't have the money or the space for a floor loom. Not really a towel. It's your third third project on it. Gotcha. What um what colors are you using? I'm assuming it's some of the uh, the yarn that you have uh, spun. Oh, wait, you said it's cotton. I don't know if you spin cotton.
missed. I split the yarn there. Mostly white commercial yarn. Put a green and brown section in the warp. And, oh, that is probably going to be really pretty. Okay, let me change my color here soon. Okay, I need to go back to my yellow. Yeah, I need to get my uh, rigid, rigid head of loom out and mess with it again. It's been a while. Again, I only know the real basics of weaving. I need to find a way that I could set it up and get the camera angle the right way to show it here on stream. Just learning yourself? Hey. Yeah, I'm that way with spinning. That is um, a possibility for the, um, if we do a viewing party night on Discord, I know of a YouTuber who has um, shown how to use a basic loom. Brain is still stuck on trying to figure out what you're supposed to make that's appropriate for it. Yeah. And how wide is your loom? You said something about 53 inch? Your, your, uh, your work, your piece that's on it. Oh, 36 inch wide, I'm sorry. Hmm. I know there's certain certain looms, floor looms, that are better for certain projects. I know, I can't remember the name of the, the type of, that it's called. I know there's one that's really good for rugs. And then there's other ones that are good for lighter weight cloth. We only strung up 26. For the project was I did a full width project last time and it was too awkward. I could see that. Especially if you're first learning, trying to throw that shuttle across that wide.
Ah, went in the wrong stitch. You dropped a picture in the Discord. Okay, yeah, def I'll definitely check it out. Oh, wow. Okay. Do you mind if I share it here on stream for those who aren't popped on the Discord or actually aren't on the Discord? Okay, let me see if that's the right... Nope, that's not the right one. Um, let me choose the right, oh, that's not what I want. Let's see. Thanks for the follow. Thank you for the follow, Ra Rachel Loves Crochet. Welcome. Let me make this larger. This is Citric for Blue's uh, loom that they're working on. That is gorgeous. Yeah, I don't know. I know, I know basically how they work and all with the foot pedals and it raises up the shafts at different time, at different, depending on which pedal you hit and... Very nice. Okay. Click that off. Oh, and then this is the underside. I guess when the green and the brown stripe were added. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I hope there's going to be, uh, demonstrations of floor looms and weaving i'm assuming there is there's going to be that at the uh sheep and wolf festival coming up in about two weeks I gotta click this, see what, keep track of my rows that I'm doing. Okay, I got two more yellow after this, but I'm not even done this row yet. Oh, you sent the meme? Okay, give me one second. So I asked my mom why she never took us back to the Sheep and Wool Festival. She said my dad got hurt pretty bad 
while walking around and didn't want to do that much walking with the little kids. Do I blame them? No. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. All that walking, I understand. I've got... I deal with sciatica. And it's fine sitting, but walking for extended periods of time. But I got a cane, and that helped a little bit yesterday. I did sit down, but it's when everybody else was eating. Okay, I think we are going to do the meme of the stream. Alrighty, no one understands me like my yarn. Yeah, <laughs> I think we all here can uh, can agree with that that statement. Yeah, my old sciatica because. As a silly child who did silly things, but dang, it hurts sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Nothing like a meme calling everyone out. <laughs> Thank you, Kurojo. No, my sciatica, I think, is weight-related. I need to lose some weight here. But getting out and walking around will help. So it's a good thing. It might have been a good thing that they didn't have funnel cake yesterday because that wouldn't have helped. <laughs> but dang it, that's what I was craving. I did get a um, breakfast sandwich and a hash brown at my favorite gas station convenience store. That makes really good breakfast sandwiches. So there's there's that. But uh no funnel cake. Yeah, yeah, funnel cake would have eased the pain. Sh sure, yeah, we're going to go with that. Stitch is really tight there. Let's see if I can get it into that. There we go. Alrighty, so we did yellow, green, yellow, two more yellow, then orange, then yellow. It's the stitch.
So if uh, Clay Miko is still here, how is the um, swifting and the caking going? If that's what you're doing right now. It's getting unruly, and it's almost a third of the way done. <laughs> She's probably busy uh, taking, and she can't stop to uh, respond. So I understand that. If you can't respond, I get it. Oh, she sent me a picture. Very nice. I don't think she will mind me uh, sharing her. This is her Swift and her cake. Cake winder. That is a really pretty yarn. It's like a, it's a green with some purple here and there. Good job. I won't bother you. You can get back to caking. <laughs> Okay. Move this out of the way.
Put that off. I don't need that going. It's much faster with this yellow, thicker yarn. It's only slightly thicker than the green and it's much better. Again, if there's any uh, stitches or patterns or whatever that you would anybody would like me to uh, possibly demonstrate on stream, drop it in the suggestion channel on the Discord, and there's a good chance it might show up on stream one, one night. And when I mean pattern, I don't mean like a finished blanket or a finished shawl or an item or whatever, but basic um, stitch like I usually demonstrate how to do. One more row of the yellow.
think I need to flip. There just is a point where the blanket starts getting too heavy to work on top of a desk. Yeah, um, I'm not to that point yet, but I think come July and August. <laughs> By that time, the AC will be on and it won't be so warm. But still, it's going to be like... But it'd be nice come the fall and winter to the bottom will be uh um covering my lap and my legs keep me warm <laughs> folding in half because I just can't do any yep I'm running into the, uh, almost running into the problem of, okay, fold it. When I'm done with it, folding it up and place to store it, I got to, to the left of my desk, I got a place where I normally keep it. Well, that spot might be a little too small here in the next few months. So I want to keep it close at hand so I'm not moving it all over the place. I'll come up with a better place for it eventually. Um, more swatches and balls of yarn. <laughs> well, I frog most of my swatches because I need to use lighter colored yarn for camera and a lot of the stuff I have is tends to be a little bit on the darker side so that's used that's why I usually do the pink the baby blue and the white or the cream because you won't be able to see the stitches if I do pretty much any other color um, I got plenty of that I got plenty of white and the baby blue so, I could keep them, but it's not the best yarn, so just okay, I'm just going to end up frogging it and reusing it over and over again. I got some of my granny squares from the other week that I did keep because I actually really like some of those, and I might at some point make some more to go with it incorporate that into a project Crojo had mentioned at one point a while back that I should save all my swatches and at the end of the year stitch them up into a blanket which is a possibility but that would only work if they were all approximately the same size I mean yeah you can you kind of can stitch them together and they're not the right size and kind of piece them together I mean that's Something I might do is I might go back and redo all the swatches that I've shown. Yeah, as long as they're the same, as long as they're like a 5x5 five five square. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's another thing for the group project. They don't have to be grainy squares as long as they're approximately five by five. Weren't you planning on doing that massive Michigan State? Yeah, I was going to do that. He had quickly realized that the cost of the yarn alone was going to be too much. So he said, yeah, don't worry about it. And that was just um, inexpensive acrylic. He also lives in Florida. So uh, I don't think there's a big need <laughs> for a, uh, a large blanket. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind doing it. But, uh, yeah, he was like, because he was trying to, like, anticipate, like, okay, the cost of the yarn and how much it would cost for the labor and everything. And he was like, yeah, that's going to be a little too much. So, not that big of a deal. Okay, I gotta double check. Am, am I in the right? Okay, this is the last yellow well, in this group. Finish this row, then orange, and then yellow. Okay. Why don't I get multiple rows of this all in the same color next to each other? I lose track of number of rows that need to be done so it's three yeah it's only three of them Next month, when we go back to basics, I will, in addition to the basic stitches and some of the more commonly groups groupings of stitches, I will also show how to read a pattern. Because I know there's some people that can struggle with that and how to read a chart. Believe it or not, I don't really have any other whips. It's pretty much this one. I finished that last shawl. I need to come up with another uh, project as a as a whip to use. Okay, we're gonna. Clip off the yellow, which to orange. Friday it got warm. I got it in the low 80s. So 
So we got a little bit of orange in here again. Flip it all over again. So does anybody have any fun activities or anything that they're doing this spring or summer? Doesn't have to be yarn related, doesn't have to be craft related. Need some slack on this yarn. It's wanting to pull a bit. Get the yarn out of the way. Not doing anything in particular. Just trying to relax. Hey, there's, that's fun too. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, the only real thing I have planned is, like I said, the Sheep and Wool Festival. Not really making plans too far in advance. Been a chaotic few months. Hopefully things uh, settle down.
on some scissors. Either raining or the wind is blowing the trees as I hear like a rustling so sound outside. I think it's the wind. Just done this row. And we got one more row after this for tonight. I want to double check something. Oh, did I do? Oh, no. Okay, we did that, too. Yeah, okay. We're good. Thought I did an extra row. No, we're all good. I'm not frogging it. Oh, no, no, no. And it's leap year. And the extra day is in April. <laughs> no, it's not an extra row. I was just counting the the rows differently. Okay. Clip off the orange. The orange went by quick. And now back to the yellow.
and that orange is a little bit thinner than this yellow so that's going to be going to slow me down a little bit but not much look for the last time tonight At least we don't have any purples or whites. Thanks for the follow. Thank you for the follow, Snooty Snoodle. How are you, Snoodle? I'm working on my uh, 2022, not 22, 2023 temperature blanket. Yeah, I'm currently working on yesterday, so I'm pretty much up to date, and I started it back on January 1st, and yes, but this, um, this stitch pattern, the moss stitch or the linen stitch, or we call the zipper stitch here, um, isn't going to be that long because each row interlocks with the row before and after it. So that will help it from being too long. I didn't want to do even just like a single crochet because that could be way too long. I didn't want to have a uh, blanket that was eight feet long <laughs> since each row is a, is a day. And this will la this will take me till the end of the year to finish. Temperature blankets are one of those things we actually got to figure it out beforehand, or it's you end up with a giant thing you can't use. Yes. Even if you're gonna do like a temperature scarf where you only do it for like three months, you still gotta plan it out. There's a lot of math involved, and yeah, the width is not the problem, it's the length, and it's like, a couple of friends are doing a granny square temperature blanket, I've seen those. And welcome, Sarcastic Yarn Hoarder. With the granny square, you could usually, a lot of people do it where they, um, each square is a different day, so you can kind of plan it out better. 
Saw someone doing a win-loss scarf for a baseball team. So it's 162 rows. And, like, that's kind of... That's cool. New to crocheting, less than four months. Well, welcome. How do you like it? Yeah, that would be cool. A uh, winning, losing blanket. Especially if it's the two colors that are of that team. Because I know a lot of teams have like a main color and then maybe a secondary color. I attempted to do one for my own baseball team, but I can figure out ratio because I don't know if I do a scarf. You don't wear that. Gotcha. Yeah, you kind of have to do the math, and and I hate to use the word. You got to do a uh, gauge swatch. Loving it. Just finished two blankets. Really like continuous granny square blankets. Very cool. Um, you just did buy two skeins of bright arse, orange Oriole. O Oriole's orange. <laughs> um, Snoodle. Since you're new to crochet, the um, what I usually do on my channel, are, hey, Hedda, and I know Hedda's interested in learning how to crochet, so it's perfect timing that you're both here, and anybody else who is uh, new or wants to get into crochet or just wants a refresher, the month of May, starting May... Is it May 1st? No. May 2nd. I will be, when I stream, I will be going to do, oh my goodness. Lady1241, you sound like Clean Miko. Um, that's scary. So, starting in May, I, on my stream, I will be doing the basic stitches. So, if anybody is interested and wants to crochet along, as I teach the stitches, that would probably be a good time. I'm going to go real slow, and throughout the whole month, we're going to do the basic ones. And some of the um, basic forms of stitches, like there are things called fans, there are bobbles, there are popcorn stitches, there are puffs, or picos. We're going to do that type of thing also. With the exception of Sunday nights, Sunday nights will be temperature blanket, of course. And again, the schedule is posted here on the Twitch stream. So you can kind of see what is going to be coming up in the next month. And during those streams, like I usually do when I show a stitch, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. And um, if you're learning the stitches, I will. You can crochet along with me. I will walk you step by step. Temperature blanket, yeah, it's a really cool idea. It's a good. Uh, good long-term project and when you're done you've got basically a record of that year when I first started this back in January and describe what a temperature blanket is basically you mark you write down the high temperature of your location and that corresponds to a certain color 
so the weather will d dictate what colors you use. You can also do this, like Klimiko in here, she did a smaller one for the days that when she was pregnant with her daughter. So she went back in time and found the uh, temperature for all of those days and did it uh, accordingly. You could do it for a, um, a year in the past. You could do it, well, there's all different ways that you can uh, track it. So hers was, was much smaller because obviously she wasn't pregnant for an entire year but it's a much smaller blanket. It's the same concept. Her color palette was totally different. And she did post it in the uh, Discord a while back. But like I said, um, oh, I'm at the end of the row. Wow. I don't have any other projects to work on. Uh-oh. Um, because I don't want to end the stream yet. What was I going to say? My mind went blank. Love when moms think projects that involve their babies. Yep. So I guess when I get done these next couple stitches, because I'm caught up. Wow, that... I did those seven rows a lot quicker than I normally do. Let me double check that I did them right. Green. Yellow. 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 Orange. Green. Orange. Yellow. Yeah. Must have got my... uh. Crojo going and just uh whipped it along. Okay, I don't know what today's high was yet, so I'm gonna leave my uh tail really long, my loop long. Actually I'm gonna put a stitch marker in it just to be on the safe side. Yeah, that stitch marker might might be breaking here soon. Yeah, that one's going to break. You know what? We are just going to use a good old-fashioned safety pin. Put that away. I'm going to fold up my blanket, and I'll show you the progress that I've made. That's actually what I could do also. I can weave in my ends. Yep, that's, that's probably what I could do, is I could work on some squares. Good idea, Grammy. Yeah, I'm not going to weave in the ends right now. But I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Actually, I have zoomed. That's as far as I can go. Let me move the bowl out of the way. So that's where I started. That green row is January 1st. And that yellow row is yesterday, the 22nd of April. So not quite a third of the way done. Let me move all of my. out of the way and I gotta find I've got a little box here somewhere with small balls of yarn I think it's in this one thanks for the follow thank you for the follow Melissa Panet how are you 
Okay, these are my uh, samples from the other week, from Granny Week. And I got a bunch of uh, little scrap balls. Well, that's good if everything is all right. I'm pretty good myself. We're going to pop this down here. I'm going to work on some grainy squares. And let me... Get a few of my samples from all of those go into a Franklin ball Franken ball. Made turkey coconut curry tonight, but since I'm a hobbit, I ate it with baby potatoes instead of rice. <laughs> I'm not a fan of curry. I'm not a fan. No, what I'm going to end up doing, and i got to measure this. I'm going to get my, uh, my tape measure. And let's see. Oh, we're at four and a half. Okay, that still might work because I can stretch a bit. Um, That's going to be too big. Those are way too big. I can do that because that could be any size. What I'm going to be working on here, because I still got about an hour left of the stream, because I don't, my per, my plan was to stream earlier, because I missed last night's stream, so I, that's why I did the um, caterpillar stripe stitch, and then do temperature blanket, and temperature blanket usually takes two hours. Coconut lightens it up, cap it mild, personal preference. Gotcha. Yeah, I just don't like a lot of the different blends of seasonings that are in it just for something about it i know there's so many different types of of curry um yeah this is four inch i can always do another round on those i am going to make a bunch of granny squares of different types where are my other ones i have got a mess over here In there. Bear with me, everybody. I gotta find my other squares. Here we are. Gonna make squares of different types to go into the group project that I had mentioned earlier. And if if people weren't here earlier when I mentioned it, I had this idea where you take all your scraps, even if you have bigger scraps or whatever, or even if you don't. I've seen this, uh, this other super cute idea for a blanket. It's sewn through, but it's taking the baby clothes that don't fit anymore and sewing them up. Yep, I've seen that seen that done before too. We use the, uh, the baby, the, all the baby items. So we're gonna t what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna make a bunch of different granny squares of all different types, or any type of square, roughly five inches square. And then people I know in here that I know personally, like Grammy and Clay Miko and Crojo, we're all gonna make squares or whatever throughout however many months. Once we all get a bunch of them, a whole bunch of them. They're all going to be done in the same weight of yarn, which is a worsted weight size 4 yarn in acrylic, and about 5 inches square. And then we're all going to get together, take all of our squares that we've made, mix them all up, and then sit around, and then join them together. So I'll be joining one from one person to one from another, so from whoever's, whatever colors or whatever. And then stitch them together. And then when we all do like a quadrant or whatever, we can stitch them all into one big blanket. And then donate it to uh, probably Project Linus. So I think that's what we're going to end up doing. Oh, my voice is cracked. But I don't want to end up it looking horrible. Include 10 by 10. Yeah, we could do some 10 by 10s. 
This isn't 10 by 10. That's a 6 inch. But this square could be whatever size you want. This square could be... That's about four, going to be about four and a half. But yeah, you can do. Yeah, ones that are that are like over five go around enough till it's ten by ten. And if you got, let's say this is ten by ten, and you got, let's say these are each five by five. Obviously, they're not. But then you can put two up against your ten by ten. So that's, that's a possibility too. Love all of them, but the blue and white one is out of this world. This one here, yeah, I showed how to do this one the other week on Granny for Granny Week because there is a way to do them, and I don't have a sample of it. It's a way to do them where this here, this is a basic traditional Granny Square, and you've got. Let me show the white one; it shows up better. You've got th there's three rounds. Well, at any time, usually, you get that a round of one color, you can switch to another. So just imagine that the center here, the center ring, because there's like a ring here, there's a ring here, and then there's an outer one. Imagine this one was a different color. So you could do it that way, or this type of technique. And they all would work together. Well, um, I know you probably don't have the supplies yet, and I'm not really prepared to do a real full lesson, but I can do a real quick brief one while I do this. I'm going to use some white because it's going to show up on camera. And no, not yet. <laughs> I will show how to do granny squares in the future. In May, I'm not going to do any granny squares on, next month. Possibly in June, there might be some granny squares. Because in May, I'm going to do the basic stitches. That's okay. That's okay. You can just watch and kind of get an idea. And you... I'm not expecting anybody to crochet along with me. But like I said, I'm not going to do any granny squares in May. May is just regular stitches. The basic individual stitch. how Where to put the hook and, and all of that. Granny squares uses those basic stitches. But in a different way. You basically go round and round instead of rows back and forth. So... With a granny, when you start most of it, I mean, I can't wait to learn crochet in general. Okay, that's cool. Like I said, starting the second is when I'm going to do uh, the basic stitches. So, start most of your stitches, either if it's rows or granny squares, you're going to do a slip knot. And a slip knot... You basically, there's different ways of doing it, put, uh, of making it. I'm going to show real, the way I usually do it. Put the tail in your hand, wrap it around your fingers, and cross it, and then bring it behind. So let me do that again. So I'm going to wrap it around my fingers, cross over, take that loop off, so I've crossed, and take the strand coming from the ball, and put it underneath that loop so it looks like a pretzel and then I put my hook in this loop under that strand and through the next hole it kinda looks like a heart yeah so you're gonna go in there go like that and then you got it through the one hole, out the other hole, and then you're going to take both strands, your tail and your other strand, and pull them tight. Basic slip knot. So this knot, if you pull the working yarn, mean, the working yarn means that's connected to the ball of yarn, it'll tighten it up, and if you pull the tail, it'll loosen up the loop. 
That's how you basically start most projects. There's another type of way of starting the granny squares. The Slipknot suck. The band. <laughs> ha 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 ha. Yeah, I think it was a pretzel. There's other ways of doing it, but the way that that's the way I usually do it and, and teach somebody. Okay, so you put your hook in there. And I know you're not learning. You're not actually doing it right now. But I, I'm going to show you the chain. Usually with a granny square, you could start it with a magic circle, which I'm not showing tonight. Or you do a, you start with a series of chains. Usually I do four chains. So you're gonna hold your yarn in your left hand however it's comfortable. I usually put it over my index finger, under my next two, and over my pinky. And then that way it's gonna create a little bit of tension so it's easier to grab the yarn. And with my thumb and my middle finger, I'm gonna hold that knot. So my fingers, my finger and my thumb and the strand of yarn will form like a triangle. This is the way I do it. People hold it different ways. Whatever, however you can hold it to get a little bit of attention on that. You don't want it super tight, but you want it, you don't want it really loose because then you won't be able to pick it up. So I use my thumb and my middle finger to hold the slip knot. And then with the hook, I'm gonna go in here and again, I'll show you how to do this all in May. You go in here and you're going to bring up the yarn. You're going to go under from the inside, bring it up so it's on the hook, rotate the hook down and through the loop that's on the hook. And that's a chain stitch. So we're going to do that again. So I'm going to put my hook in, grab the yarn, rotate it down so the point of the hook is facing down bring it through the loop so I made two chains you're gonna do I'm gonna do a total of four so we got four little chains in a row and then I'm gonna connect my stitch here to my very first chain the loop on your hook does not count as a stitch so we have four it's kind of difficult to see I'll I'll get different color yarn and when I show how to do it. But we have four chains and then what we're going to do is we're going to connect the chain here at the hook and the first chain into a ring. So we're going to take our hook, put it into the chain and the chain is made up of three strands. Again, I'll get better different yarn and hopefully find a way to show show this without it being so blurry so you're going to go in there's different ways of going in i just go in under two there's two strands on top there'll be a strand on the bottom go in grab that strand bring it through that chain so now you have a loop here and then you've got a loop there that when you brought through the chain, then you're going to bring that same loop that you just pulled through the chain through the loop that's on your hook. That's a slip stitch. What camera are you using for my hands? This camera is a Logitech C525, I think. It's not the best, but it's what I got. So what I've done, that, done there... I've got four chains, and it's kind of difficult to show right here, but there's a hole in here. So I went, I connected the first chain to the last chain, and it forms a little ring. So do a granny square. I'm going to do a basic granny square. All of my stitches are going to go into that ring. So first, what I need to do is I need to, I don't even see how... I don't even see, even know how to do this. Oh, you don't know how to do a, uh, a ring? Okay. I will... In June, I'm going to do granny squares again. 
or even the rest of this week after I'm done each stitch because I don't have a project to work on I might come back to this so we might do this over and over again throughout the week because I don't have any other projects to work on so we'll revisit this I really wonder how the first person who started Couture even yeah I don't know how people thought of this <laughs> So we got a little ring and it's joined. Now we're gonna build stitches all the way around. And what we're gonna end up doing, that ring here, that hole in the center, is this hole here. When you do a granny square or a circle, you can do any, pretty much any shape. We're doing squares. You start in the center and you work your way out and you keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, however, however large you want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain three, like we started with the slip knot. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to yarn over. This is called yarn over. We're going to yarn over and bring it through the loop on the hook. That's one chain. We're going to do it two more times. Two and three. So we have three chains coming off of our loop. That three chains will count as a double crochet. Don't worry if you don't know what a double crochet is. If you're new to crochet, it's, it's one of the basic stitches. And again, in May, I'll go through each of the basic ones. So we've got our double crochet. That counts as one double crochet. And now we're going to do another double crochet, a proper one, into our chain, in, in, into our round center here in this circle in the center. So to do a double, we're going to wrap our yarn. We're going to yarn over. So we have one loop on the hook. When you finish a stitch in crochet, you're always going to have one loop left on your hook. That's how all stitches end. We're going to wrap our hook. So we have two loops on the hook. And we're going to put our hook into our center hole. Don't worry about going into any of the stitches. Just go into that center hole, go through the hole, and then we are going to grab that strand and bring it through. So that strand just came through the center hole, and we have three loops on the hook. We're going to yarn over. So a yarn over is we're putting, just like we made our chains, we're going to put our hook into the center triangle, grab the yarn bring it that loop so when we grab it it's going to form a loop and we're going to pull that loop through the first two loops that are on the hook so grab the loop pull it through two now we have two left on the hook now we're going to do the same thing we're going to yarn over grab that loop and bring it through the last two loops on the hook that's a double crochet since we have made that stitch in the loop here, the bottom of this stitch where it's connected, I can move this over. Recommend a Logitech stream cam when you decide to upgrade. It goes on sale quite often. Your stream is great, very informative and clear instructions. Oh, thank you. Yeah, definitely. I definitely need to upgrade this webcam. So, we have basically made two double crochets. Our chain three here counts as one, and that's another. Now we're gonna make one more double crochet. Again, to do a double crochet, actually, when we finish that stitch, like I said, we have one loop on the hook. And I don't know if this, actually, this might help. That helps a little bit. There's not much of a glare. Yeah, that probably helped a lot. So we finished the stitch, we have one loop on the hook. Now we're gonna do another double crochet. We're going to yarn over. So we have two on the hook. We're gonna go into that same center hole, bring up a loop. So we're gonna go, go under, bring up the loop, bring it up through that hole. 
and it might help if I zoom in a little more. We have three on the hook. We're going to yarn over, bring that loop through the first two, two loops on the hook. That leaves two on the hook. We're going to yarn over again and bring it through the last two. So we have just made three double crochets. The granny, basic granny stitch is made up of groups of three double crochets together. That's pretty much the whole thing. Now, that's one grouping. Now we're going to do, that is going to be a side of our square. Now we need to make a corner because squares have corners. We're going to chain two. So remember how chains work. Go in, bring up, catch the strand on our hook, rotate it, and bring it through the loop that's here on the hook. That's a chain, and do it one more time. That's chain. That's two chains. That will form a corner. Believe it or not, that will make a corner. Now, into the center ring, we're going to do three more double crochets. So we're going to wrap for a double, go into the center ring, bring up the loop, up the strand, three on the hook, yarn over through the first two, and yarn over through the last two. That's a double. We need two more doubles because each grouping has three doubles. So there's one. Going to wrap the hook for a double, go in, and these are these are, I should have said, these are U.S. terms of stitches. I should have said that from the beginning. U.K. terms are slightly different. So we're going to wrap the hook, go into the same center hole, grab the strand, bring it up. Now we have three on the, look, on the hook. Yarn over through the first two. Grab it, yarn over through the next two. That's two double crochets. We're going to do one more. I'm going to wrap the hook, go in, bring up the strand through the loop, through the hole we just made, three on the hook, yarn over through the first two, yarn over through the next two. So once we did that, we had our first grouping and now our second grouping, our two chains here made the corner. The corner doesn't actually form until you start making your grouping. Now we're going to do another corner. So we chain two. And into that same center hole, we're going to do three doubles. Again, to wrap, go in, bring up the strand, three on the hook, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. And the whole time, all of these, if it, if it gets real, real bunched up and you have so many strands, so many stitches, you can move this around because that ring that you formed is a solid ring. The ring is not going anywhere. The stitches are just going around that ring. So you can move it to make more room for that. So that's a double crochet. We're going to do two more. Going to wrap, go in. Bring up a strand, three on the hook, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. That's our second double. We're going to make one more double. So we're going to wrap, go into the center, bring up a loop, three on the hook, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. We've made another side. We have three sides and a square. And we learned in elementary school, kindergarten, primary school, whatever you call it, that a square has four sides and four corners. Well, we have three sides and two corners. So we need another corner. So we have to chain two. There's variations on it. This is the basic one. There's other ones where you chain different amounts. I'm just doing the basic granny here. So we've done our two chains. And then in that center hole again, we're going to put in three doubles. So we wrap for a double, go in, bring up the strand, 
three on the hook, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. Okay, I have to redo that one because my double crochet got a little long there. And when you first start out, and I don't care if it's granny squares or regular rows or whatever, your stitches are not going to be even. They're going to be a mess. That's going to come with time. So when you do start learning how to crochet, and that's anybody who's listening, don't be discouraged. My first thing that I did looked a mess. So we're going to do the double again. We're going to wrap, go in, bring up the loop, three on the hook, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. Do that two more times. Again, wrap, go in, bring up the loop, three on the hook, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. That's two of them. We need one more. And I'm just going to go and do it real quick. So we have four sides, but three corners. We need to make a corner right here. So we're going to chain two, and now we need to connect that corner to our side. Now, here's, let me get my pointer. This here is our was our first double crochet, but it was actually made with three chains. So we're going to go to the very top chain, so it's the third chain. So if we find the bottom one, this is one, and my, the camera's not the clearest, but there's one, two, three. Here at the, th the third one, we're gonna do something called a slip stitch. And we did a slip stitch when we joined the ring. I'll show the slip stitch again. So we're not wrapping anything, we're not doing any of that. We're gonna go into the top of the stitch. So we've gone in, we still have a loop on the hook, because again, when we finish the stitch, there's gonna be one loop on the hook. So we've gone in to our the top of our chain, grab a loop, grab I me, mean, grab the strand, bring it through that, and now to finish the motion, the loop we just brought through, we're going to bring that loop through this loop, and then bring it like that. That is one round. I'm going to make this bigger. So the way I do it. Is I always start in a corner. There are ways to do it that you can you can start here. It's confusing. I mean, I understand it, but teaching somebody, it's confusing. So the best way that I do, again, like I said, I work from the corner. But we have to get to the corner. We're not at the corner here. We gotta, we're going to slip stitch our way to that corner space, not into the chain, with that corner hole. And to slip stitch, we're gonna to go to the very next stitch, which is right here. We're gonna go in, just like we did when we joined. We're gonna go in the next stitch over. Yep, this is granny squares. So we're gonna go into the next stitch over, bring up a strand, bring it through, and then bring it through the, the other loop that's on the hook. That's slip stitching. We're going to slip stitch our way to the corner. We've got another stitch here. Go in, bring up that strand, grab the strand with the hook, bring it through, and then bring it through the, the loop that's on the hook. And we're going to do that one more time, but this time we're going to go into our center hole, grab the strand, bring it up, and then that that loop we just brought through, we're going to bring it through the loop that was already on the hook. So now we're, we've just moved over to the corner and you won't be able to see any stitches. It's going to be, it's like magic. It just goes from here to there and there's no extra stitch, no extra visible stitches. So now we need to make a grouping, a grouping of three here. And our groupings, if we look here on this sample, we, we just made this here. These four here is this. It's these four center ones. We need to make the next round all the way around. So we are now in this corner. So where, this, where we just slip stitched to, 
is one of these corners. So in that corner, we're going to do a grouping of three. We'll do a chain and a grouping of three all in this corner. So like we started our first round, we're going to chain up three. One, two, three. That counts as a double crochet. And into this hole, into that large hole there, you're going to do two doubles. And then you could take all of those and move them to the side to give yourself some room. So that's our one grouping. And now we're going to do chain two. And then in that same hole, do three more doubles. One, two, and three. And we just have done one corner of our second round. Now, and there's different ways of doing it. The way I usually do it is after we chain two for a corner, but on the sides in between our grouping, because we have a grouping here, we're going to put a group here. In between, I do a chain. Some people don't. I do a chain. So I do one chain here, and that one chain will be, will be between groupings, or groups of three, on the sides of our square. Because this is gonna this is our side. Now, after we've done our chain, in the next corner space, we're gonna do three doubles. And then we're gonna move that around. So we've finished our side here. And now we're going to chain two because we've come to the corner. And in that same corner space, we'll do three more doubles. So now we've done our second corner. We're on the side here, so I'm going to chain one. And in the next corner, we're going to do the same thing, repeat it. Do three doubles, two chains, and three doubles. And I know this, I'm going a little bit fast. But I will go more in depth on this. Like Tuesday after I do our scheduled stitch, I will have more time. And I can go redo this all over again and go much slower if anybody's crocheting along. And if you don't have any of the materials, the yarn and the hooks or whatever yet, don't worry about it. Because we will definitely come back to this in the future. So now we've done one grouping. And we're going to chain two. And in that same space, do three more doubles. So we just finished our third corner, and now we're going to chain one, and in our last corner, we're going to do the exact same thing. Three doubles, two chains, and three doubles. So we finished our last corner, but we have we still have this gap here. So we need to do one chain because that's a side, and then we're going to slip stitch to the top of our very first double from that round, which happens to be three chains. It was our our three chains when we started, and we're going to slip stitch into the top of that three chain grouping we had there. So go in, 
grab the strand, bring it through, and then bring that same loop through the loop that's on your hook. That's a slip stitch. And then you can stop now, or if you want to make it bigger, this one has three rounds, this one only has two so far, we're going to do another round. So the same thing, we're going to slip stitch our way to the, the next corner, which is right here. So in each stitch, we're going to slip stitch, slip stitch, and then we're at the corner, we're going to slip stitch. Since we're at the corner now, now we can chain up three. That will give us our height, and that chain three will count as a double crochet for our first little grouping. So there's our three chains. Now we need two more double crochets to finish that group. I need to move all my stitches over so, so I can have room to access the space. We're going to chain twice, and in that same hole, do three more doubles. The corners are always the same in this basic granny square. So that's our corner. Now we're on a side, so we're going to chain one. But we've got, we can't do this corner yet because we've got this, there's not, there's so much room here. So in the next space, because previous row, when we did that chain in between these groupings, forms a space. In that space, we're going to do three double crochets. So after I did this grouping, I did one chain. And now we're going to do three double crochets in this space here on the side. One two, and three. We're still on the side. We're going to chain one. Now we've come to the corner, and the corner's the same thing. Three doubles, two chains, and three doubles. One, two, and three. Move it over so I have some room. Two chains, and in that same space, do three doubles. You've done the corner, do a chain, and we're at the side again. In that hole here on our side, we do three doubles. Chain one, and we've come to the next corner, and the corner's at three doubles. Move all of my stitches around to give me some room to work. Two chains, and in that same corner space, three doubles. We get done a grouping, chain one, and in the next space, we'll do three doubles. Chain one, and in the next corner space, same thing, three doubles. Two chains, because the when you chain twice, that will form the corner space for the next round, if you decide to do another round. And if not, it'll be the finished round of your square. And then it'll get three more doubles into that same space. Oh, I lost the stitch. And that's the thing with crochet. If you drop a stitch, you can always redo it. It's real easy to do. You can always rip it out and start over. And now we've come to the end of our grouping here. We're going to chain one. We've got our last space on the side. 
that gets three doubles. Again, we've done a group, so now we have the chain one, and now we're going to slip stitch to the top of our turning chain. It's not a turning chain, actually. It's the top of our chain, our three chains, so it's the very top one. Go in, bring up the loop, up the strand, bring it through, and then bring it through the one on the hook. And if that's the size we want, because that's the same size as this, we can finish it. Now, before I finish it, I want to see what size we have. We're at four inches. I'm going to go around one more time. I want to try to get the around five inches. And I don't know what that is in, oh. It's a little over 13 centimeters. For those who use, use metric, because I know there are people here that are not in the US. So again, to get to the corner, we got to slip stitch our way. So we go into the next stitch and just slip stitch and slip stitch and slip stitch. Again, I will do more slower instructions of this. We got the corner, we're gonna chain three. And the same thing happens with the, with the corners. You do two more, because that first chain of three counts as a double. So we have our group here chain two, and in that same space, do three doubles. And I'm going to run out of yarn. That's not what I intended. <laughs> I think I, I have more white. I'll do a join. So now, we've done our group, chain one, and in the hole here, we're, oh, nope. I did the wrong going, group is going to do the wrong stitch. I'm going to do three doubles. And now we're going to chain one because we're still on the side. And in that next space, do three doubles. Every space on the sides get three doubles. And then every corner space gets three doubles, two chains, and three doubles. And in between the groupings of your three doubles on the sides, I do one chain. Some people don't do don't do the chain in between the, the your groups of three. Again, there's our group. We've got the corner, we're gonna chain two, and then do another group of three. But I've come to the end of my yarn here. And I think I'm good, I can go for a little bit longer. I'm gonna chain one, and then that, sun, that hole, we're gonna do three doubles. And this is a good way to show how to join a strand. Let me get some of my other white. Do I got, where did that ball go to? Okay. So we're at the end here. Well, we can add more of the same color. So when, and I will go over this when I do the other, the basic stitches, I'll show you how to, to join a new strand, but I'll show you right here also. So instead of going through the last two, yarning over to the last two, we're gonna drop our tail, and we're gonna pick up the, uh, the same strand, and this goes for changing colors too. This happens to be the same color. We're just adding more. So we've dropped our tail, but we still have two loops on the hook. We're gonna take our new strand. 
how do you weave in your ends because they can't do that with crochet yeah I'll show you I'll show you how to weave in ends and I'll show you how to do what I'll show you here is how to crochet over your ends and then that way you won't have to weave them in so my new strand I'm gonna fold over a few inches it's got a loop just fold it over on itself and that folded over we're gonna put on our hook and we're gonna bring that loop through the two that are there and then what we're gonna end up doing is on the back side here this long one is our tail from our first strand and then the short one is what we just joined with we're gonna grab both of those strands together and then we're also going to pull, this is the working yarn, this is the yarn that's connected to the ball, and we're gonna pull that snug. So that finished our, our, our strands, and now we're gonna chain one. Okay, the problem with Thanks the- Thanks for the follow. Oh, that scared me. Thank you, Whiskey Game, Gamer, Whiskey Gamer 1983. Okay. I'm not going to be able to, sometimes with, with granny squares, it's difficult to weave over your tails as you crochet. I will show that once I get done this round, I'll go back and show you how to weave it in with a yarn needle. Some stitches you could do that. This one is it's a little more difficult because it's an open stitch. So we have, did we do a chain? Okay, so we finished our three. Now we're gonna chain one and then we're just gonna continue along the same way that we have been all along. Ever, whoops. Oh, no problem, head up. I, I, I don't want, don't always remember that the time difference, but yeah, get sleep. Sleep's important. Again, I will re I will touch on this again rest of this week. And then starting May 2nd is when I'm going to show the individual stitches in regular rows back and forth. Hook by Robin on YouTube recommended. She did? Wait a minute. She knows of me? Did she personally, or did YouTube recommend? Because the YouTube's algorithm, if you watched somebody's channel, they might say, okay, if you like this, you might watch some other pe some other um, channels. But thank you, I mean, thanks to uh, YouTube or Hooked by Robin. So we've got our three, our group of three. We're gonna chain one. YouTube recommended you. I was what? Oh, okay, gotcha. Yes, because all of my um, streams that are here on Twitch, as soon as I'm done, I upload them raw. I don't edit them. I don't do any of that type of stuff. It just gets what you get is what what you see is what you get. It gets uploaded. I don't do all that fancy editing. Okay, so we chained one, and we're in our corner. We're gonna do three doubles, and then we're gonna finish like normal. Chain two, and in that corner, you're gonna do three doubles, and it's the same thing all around except every time you get bigger. You're doing more groupings on the sides. So the first one, there's only one group on each side. The next row, there's two groups on each side. The third is three, and then so on. So it's a pretty simple uh, stitch. Okay, I'm using my crap yarn because there's knots all in it. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be included in any blanket because 
I'm not going to be joining all the time. Normally, I don't knot them like this. I did that real quick hastily when I was frogging my samples. Normally, I would not do this. I'm not going to untie this. I'm not going to cut this out because I just joined. I'm a homeless army veteran that works for Amazon. And as a security guard in my downtime, I knit. And starting to get the hang of crocheting. Oh, wow. I'm sorry that um, you're homeless. And thank you for your service. I know how to knit. I'm just really bad at it. I'm really, really, really slow at it. So that knot right there, I just incorporated in it. It's not going to be pretty. Again, this is a, sa um, a sample. I don't think this is going to be incorporated in any blankets that I end up making. Housing is a dang disaster. Veterans are supposed to get housing. They don't have housing, and it's really, a, yeah, it's, it is a very sad situation. So we got our cluster, and now at the corner we do two chains, and then we do another grouping of our three doubles. And we're working on our last side. When I get to the end here, I'll show you how I weave in ends. So now we're gonna chain one, and then in that, again, the same thing in all any of our, any of our spaces, we do our three doubles. Yeah, this is like, this ball of white is full of knots. Chain one, and now we do our three doubles. And now we've come to the end, we're gonna chain one. And we're going to slip stitch to the top of our chain that we started with, like usual. Slip stitch it. And then what I'm going to end up doing is going to end this here. I'm going to do a quick little chain. So I'm going to do a chain to secure it. I'm going to cut long enough to leave weaving my tails. So I, after I did the slip stitch, I did that chain. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hook and I'm just going to pull it and it's going to pull this strand all the way through that chain, all the way out. And then if you just pull on this and snug up that chain that you went through, that locks it in. It's difficult being homeless and working, but since I get injured, I'm going to working my security job just to be able to keep my car, which is also... My home, looking at getting a van that can convert to a camper. I'm sorry. I hope things uh, start to uh, look up for you. So now we've got all of our strands here on the back, not including that. Okay, ignore that. Well, we got all these strands that we need to weave in all of our tails. So we got our center, and there's a way to that I should have shown to weave over your tail in the center, but I'll explain that at the, on a different day. So you get your yarn needle, and actually I don't want the plastic one because I don't like the plastic one. I use a metal one, and I use one that's got an offset tip, it helps get the get into the stitches a little bit easier. So I just thread the end in, just like that. And to weave in the ends, I'm gonna just pick, go in and with the needle and go through a few stitches right into the tops of the stitches. 
bring it through, pull it snug, but not too snug where it distorts the stitches. And then we're going to work back the other way. We're not going to go into the same hole. We're going to go skip a little bit past where we came out. We came out here. We're going to go in right about there. Go through a few stitches. Bring it through. Snug, but not too tight. So we don't want to distort any of our stitches. And now we're going to go back the same, the, the way we just, we did originally. Go back the other way. Again, don't go to the same place because you're going to pull, it'll just pull all your, your stitches out. Go back in a few stitches. Right there. Make certain it's somewhat snug. And then, real close and careful. Sometimes it helps if you lay the your work flat like it is now. And clip real close. And there, you've woven in your ends. And once I weave in all of them, and I flip it around or whatever, you're not, you're not even going to be able to tell where you weaved in your ends. You do the same thing for all of your other ends. And that's pretty secure if you weave it in one direction, go back, and then weave it back in the third time. Those strands, they're not going to be coming out. I try not to put any knots in my uh, work. My tail here, I left it a little short, so this might not be as successful as I would like it to be. Don't you hate it when your tail's too short? <laughs> and then just clip carefully. Don't clip your work. And you do the same thing for all of them. This one might work a little bit better since this is near the bottom of the stitches. And you can go through the base of the stitches there. That'll hide them a lot easier. And I got my last one in my center. Again, like I said, um, possibly Tuesday when I revisit the granny squares, because I'm going to do it again. I will show the match I will show how to stitch over your tail as you go because I didn't do it this time. I will also show the magic ring. And I gotta find a stitch. When I teach the basic stitches in May. I will show how to, doing rows back and forth, how to stitch over your um, tails when you join yarn as you go. Again, ignore that because that's where I tied the yarn. That's a granny square. And we are a little over five inches. Actually, you know what? I could use this in the blanket. I just have to address this little knot over here, which I really don't like. So. I think we, wait. Oh, I lost my container for my needles. Alrighty. I'm gonna see if we can find somebody to raid tonight. Let's see. See who's on. Um, let's 
the Um, the only, I think the only person I can see that's framing anything craft related, let me click this over here. Let's see. Give me one second. Come on. Good night, Grammy. Um, all righty. We're going to go and raid Heather Bizzo. She is knitting at the moment. Um... Thank you, everybody, for joining and the people who have followed me. Um, be on Tuesday night, 8 Eastern, for the Bird's Foot Spike Stitch. And we will do more Granny Squares. And I think that's what we're going to do. Okay. Okay. So everybody have a good night, happy crafting, and stick around for the raid if you want to join the raid. Oh, I didn't do that Thanks right. Thanks for the follow. Thank you for the follow, Mahogany Chica. Okay. So we're going to go raid her real quick. Everybody have a good evening. And I will chat with you all on Tuesday. Date night? That's very sweet.